Okay, so we are going to start out here. Let's start out slow and just uh, ease into it as we as we uh, head out here. And what we're going to do in the flight is we're just going to eventually go full speed and just show the yaw movement when you go to the yaw like right now. I'm going to go to the right as we're going slow. And I do have it in rabbit mode. So it's very hard to get at first, but if you practice it, it's not bad at all. Because when you turn it, it doesn't respond right away. It does take a little bit for it to respond. Okay, so let's go ahead, and I don't know if you can hear it, but it, you can hear some creaking. The uh, yoke does creak a bit when you're using it, but let's go ahead and start moving forward harder on the stick as we raise an altitude here. And we're just going to fly straight on out and bring the altitude up as we go. And the goal is, uh, let's do about two miles. So that's about 10,500 feet is what we're going for. Which has nothing to do with the yoke itself. But just to uh, show you a nice long distance flight with it. Nothing to be worried about. Beautiful day out here. I don't know if we've got any type of glimmer off that water there but let's take a little look down and see a little bit of the sun reflecting off the water so we're at 360 feet and we're going about 55 feet a second and we're 4,000 feet out already So as I get to this opening right here, we'll we'll do a little left and right, y'all. Okay, y'all. All right, so I'm going to bring it to the left here. Again, we're full speed rabbit mode. And actually, no, I wasn't. I was on four that whole time. Now I'm on five. Full speed rabbit mode. 60 feet per second. And let's bring a little left, y'all and see if we can control it nice and somewhat smooth. See how it's kind of jerky? It's because I'm right on the edge of it, of the switch. So let's go to the right now. And as I'm moving it, it's not doing anything for a while. You just kind of get an idea of where that spot is. So right there is about as smooth as I can do a yaw. Which is not incredibly smooth. Now if you turn it all the way down to turtle mode, then of course it's going to be smoother. But again, I'm at, I'm at full speed and I just wanted to kind of demonstrate what it's like at full speed. It's not as jerky as what a lot of people say it is. And uh, again, this is on the Mavic 2, but even on the Phantoms, there's some decent flights out there. Not anything long range that I, I've seen yet, but there's some decent flights out there and uh, it handles well with the Phantom as well. Let's get these treetops a little bit here. And we're at 9,500 feet. Beautiful day. Try to pan up slower now.
Yeah, I don't like the location of that button for tilting my camera. It's just not easy to make it really nice and fluid. I'd like to see that in a different location. So we've already hit the two mile mark. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, we'll go further. Let's go for 15,000 feet. We'll head for the bridge. And also, I just want to point out about the uh, interference message that you see flashing up on the top, the electromagnetic interference. Uh, I am not worried about that one bit. You see it in everybody's video, and I think it's just a glitch in the, in the uh, app that they need to work out. So uh, hopefully they'll work that out. If you know your area, if you fly in this area, like I'm in a very remote area, but if you fly in an area like that often, you know whether or not you have these type of situations, high electromagnetic interference or anything like that. So, again, I'm not worried about it at all. I know the area. I know my quad. I'm very safe flying the way I am where I am. So, we're going to try for about 15,000 feet and then we'll swing her around. says returning to home. Let's go ahead and stop and exit out. I canceled it. I'm going to turn us around here a little bit. Reposition where I'm at so I can get a better aim on it. Let's go for that 15,000. I'm not happy until I get what I said I wanted to get. <laughs> so all I've done is just reposition myself. I'm not sitting down on the stump anymore behind the trees sixty three percent battery fifteen satellites signals pretty good dropping a little bit and we're in the red and we're not going to hit it and we disconnected okay so here's a good situation aircraft disconnected so what do we do nothing <laughs> it's in return to home and we'll wait for it to view on the screen again I'm not going to do anything except turn my recording back on if it'll let me no it won't Let's just let it do its thing it's coming back over the field now I'm back in control with the fluidity so this whole time I did nothing I didn't touch a thing I did not panic let it go into its disconnect and reconnect And on my controller, it's showing me that it is coming back. I'm at 14,200 feet. And as it gets closer, we'll get better, better results out of the screen here. Okay, let's try recording now. And now it's recording. All right, so I should be good to control it myself. I'm going to take it out of return to home. And let's just go back to the stick control myself here and fly her back. And it disconnected. So we're just going to let it 
fly back a little more on its own, return to home. It did a disconnect again. And uh, I wasn't looking at the signal. My signal is showing kind of low right now. Medium. Let me tilt it a little bit here. There we go. That's better. Take it out of return to home now and let's see what happens. And do we have control with the sticks or the fluidity? Yes, we do. All right, so I'll re, -re I'll re look at that and uh, see if it was something between the yoke and my device or the app or what have it. I think I dropped in signal is what I think it was. And we're just flying it back on our own now. We're 50% battery. So we almost reached 15,000 feet. Which would have been like, uh, what? 2.7 miles or something like that. So once I get closer, we'll slow it down into turtle mode and uh, we'll do a little bit of yaw movement there just to show. But as we're flying, let's go ahead and go towards the right a little bit. Let's try to come back to the left as nice and smooth as possible. Oh, it's taking over again. Not sure what happened there, why it's coming back into return to home mode, but I would like to cancel that and fly it myself. I'm not into a battery warning yet. But let's go back to where we were and just kind of work the all. So it's a little notchy. I'm trying to go as slow as I can while I'm in rabbit mode here speed five let's bring it back to the left a little bit so not so easy to do and we're coming back at about 59 feet per second we'll start dropping some altitude as we do Pan down a little bit. I hope the footage all turns out nice. Uh, I used a, I think I used a number four ND filter. I didn't go high. Get a lot of cloud shadowing and mountain shadowing out here, so a higher ND filter messes me up in that situation. back off on the speed a little bit here let's actually go ahead and let's put it into a stop I'm gonna put it all the way down into turtle mode now and then we'll we'll y'all left and right with it since you can see the screen here uh, or something to focus on on the screen that little pump house or valve house whatever it is for the dam so let's uh, come down a little bit here and let's go ahead and go a little bit to the left as easily as we can starting now so in turtle mode it does do it a little smoother let's 
not bad. And let's go towards the right now. So it's a lot easier when you're all the way turned down. Naturally, it would be. And we'll just go forward here. And they're doing some construction down here on my dam, which I'm sure you can hear. So we'll fly overhead and take a little peek at what they're doing. resurfacing some of the bad concrete areas. Let's fly it straight for the tree here, see how our sensors work, make sure the app doesn't affect that any. I know that sounds stupid, but let's give it a shot. And she hits the brakes. Okay, so all in all, that was a good flight. Uh, we took the Mavic Pro 2 out and went about 15,000 feet, uh, which I just want to make sure you know it has nothing to do with this at all. You're still under the control of your radio as far as your uh, signal goes. So um, it's not a range test or anything like that. It's just mainly I wanted to do a nice long flight uh, with it because nobody's yet to really do that and uh, just show that there's really nothing to be afraid of. Your controller is still working the signal and all that. If anything happens between your uh, yoke and controller, you can go back to the controller and control the quad. Um, and that maybe that's something we'll try to duplicate some loss of connection type situations. Maybe we'll try to do that in another video and uh, just show that you can regain control or keep control of it. Um, but I just want to say all in all I really am happy with this product um, again I am totally unbiased I purchased this on my own I did not receive it for free and uh, I look forward to a version 2 because it does desperately need a version 2 um, it's a very good product for the type of flying I was doing but if you are doing anything that you want it to be very fluid uh, very cinematic this isn't a good a good use of it so we're going out and just flying around especially line of sight and just kind of zipping around and and stuff uh it's great it really is it's, it's so easy to control um so you know in my video you'll see where you know i i i kept it on uh rabbit the whole time and i, I controlled the speed just strictly by positioning it right here and 
I did that on purpose because it's harder to be nice and fluid on your yaw when you have it all the way turned up in speed. If you turn it all the way down, it's a lot easier to keep that a lot more fluid and cinematic. So I wanted to kind of put it in worst case scenario, full speed, trying to keep it nice and steady and not slowing it down. So um, slowing it down, which I did also once in the video, if you slow it all the way down to a turtle on the control right here, um, and you do your yaw and your forward pitch, um, it is a lot better. So maybe that's something somebody else could do better than me, but uh, I really don't see it being a whole lot smoother or, or more fluid than that. So uh, anything cinematic, a version two definitely is needed. And I think that's all in the controls down here. It, it just, it's very notchy as far as you move it a little bit and it doesn't react right away. And when you want it to move slow, you're kind of right on the edge of the switch where it's on or off. So it's, it's, it's kind of notchy when it moves. When I say notchy, I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about the movement of the quad. It, it makes it kind of notchy. Almost like it's, it's skipping a gear as it's turning. So, um, but you know, that's not a big deal to me, just out and about flying. And I really don't think this is a bad price product. I don't think it's that high of a, high of a price to pay uh, for something if you're gonna use it. So I go out maybe 10 times with my Mavic. I'll take it out probably two and uh, you know, two or three flights maybe and uh, use it then. So um, I do like it, I really do. So a version two would be really nice to have this being the main focus to where this is very responsive just like you would have here make it this be your focus if it doesn't react like this then it's not ready so version two that's what i'd like to see the only other thing i really am not crazy about i do like holding it like this on my wrist but if you see right here my finger is completely hooked it it's hard to keep that movement uh, panning tilting my gimbal it's hard to keep that movement movement real slow so if i'm trying to do that and i move with the controller um, i can't get it to go extremely slow so i have to kind of really concentrate on bringing it down nice and slow and i don't want to have to concentrate that hard on something uh, in the middle of flying I, so maybe a different location for that button to where it could be used still with left or right hand but you know somewhere on the stick itself where you can maybe hit it with your thumb or something like that i don't know um but a different location for that is the only thing i i really would say everything else has got good placement um easy to hit uh maybe if that button was to the left instead you could hit it with your thumb that would be good but then it wouldn't be left or right so i don't know we'll get off that one but uh yeah that's it i just want to say um you know I, I think when when and if a version two comes out uh, my advice to you would be watch the reviews and uh you know on this one here go around and watch all the reviews i think you can see who did their homework who practiced who took it seriously um because there were some out there that just didn't take it seriously uh did not do their homework they did their first flights and it was completely watching them learn how to fly it. And that's not how I want to look at a product to buy. I don't want to watch you learn how to fly it. Um, and uh, I, I think it was, like I've said before, that Ken Huron, I think he just went out of his way to be negative about it. And uh, to me, this is being a new product and a first of its kind, um, I think it should be taken more serious. So hopefully, Fluidity Tech won't make that mistake again and send it to people like him. Um, because I really think that all the subscribers he has and all the viewers he has, I think it could, even if he's joking around, um, I think it could be misinterpreted, interpreted and, and taken the wrong way. And uh, I think it does impact the product. Same thing, if you're learning this and you're doing that part of your review where you're learning it and you really don't know what the heck you're doing with it, it, refle it reflects the product poorly. Um, so hopefully my review's good of it and you're happy with my flights. I'm not doing any of this to get a future one for free. 
Uh, I will not do that. If they come out with a version two, I will gladly purchase it on my own. If they offer me one, I will say no. Um, I want to be totally unbiased with stuff like this, so I will purchase it, purchase it myself, and I'm a resource that you can trust. Um, so hopefully with the flight that you saw with that I had of it today and my other reviews uh, that I've done on it and my future flights with it, hopefully you'll see that I take it seriously and hopefully I do it justice. Um, I'm not the best at it, but I don't think I'm terrible with it. And uh, I think I, I represent it well as it should be. So um, with that being said, we'll go ahead and end the video. I hope you enjoyed the flight and this portion of my review. And uh, I'll bring you some more uh, stuff to come. And uh, that's it. So everybody, thank you so much for subscribing. Hit that thumbs up button on your way out. And if you are new to my channel, let's bring that subscriber count up and uh, hit that button, subscribe and the bell for future content. Until the next video, take care and we'll see you then.